Hello, this is Mego for the hundredth time trying to explain how to use this program. God damn it. Um, so these are the notes. Yeah. This is the skip time. Okay, in between these notes, it's gonna skip the song uh, from here into here and it's gonna loop around. Like so. Okay. Doesn't matter if he played already the, the outro, it's just gonna skip the outro and gonna just loop around this part. So this is the end of the loop, this is the start of the loop. Very important that the start of the the, the end of the loop is the, the start of the note here. It's gonna need to be always the lowest note, and this is gonna need to be always the highest note, the P10. Okay? So uh, let's explain the notes here. Let's say this is our coin. This is our coin. We take a coin in this part of the timeline. So it's gonna play this note. Let's say we take a coin in this part of the timeline, it's gonna play this note. Okay? In this part of the timeline, this note. Okay? What happens here? We take a coin in this part of the timeline and there's no note to be seen. Uh, well, it's gonna remember the last note, uh, a, a sharp, and it's gonna play here. Okay, so each coin that you take in between here and here is going to be on A-sharp. Alright. What about multiple notes? Uh, these are very special because they can be uh, arranged in an arpeggio form. This is an arpeggio form. It might not look like it, but it actually is. Uh, what you need to do is essentially... I don't know why it's not yellow enough. Hold on. There we go. Uh, what you need to do is essentially just uh, arrange it by the length of the notes. For example, this is the shortest one, and it's going to be the first note to play the coin. I'm sorry, uh, it's going to be the first coin. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, essentially, this is the first... If you take the first coin, it's going to be the first pitch of the coin. If you take the next coin, it's going to be this pitch, because it's the shortest one next to it. Then the shortest notch next to the blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry. The shortest one next to it is gonna be this one. Then this one. I'm sorry, this one. Then this one. So this is the shortest. This is shortest next to it. Shortest next to it. Shortest next to it. And the longest. And it's gonna loop around like so. Uh, yeah, it's gonna loop around in the same way, in the same manner. It's gonna uh, create an effect of an arpeggio each time you take a, a note. It's gonna be very cool to see that in game. I haven't programmed it. Uh, I I haven't programmed it yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it and gonna showcase it to you very soon. Uh, and what are these uh, ping notes? They basically do nothing. They they're just to show you uh, the boundaries of the of the piano roll. If I place a bunch of notes here, they're not going to be printed into the Lua file. So uh, avoid these octaves. Just use the octave between C. Uh, I'm sorry, just use the octave between the third octave and the fifth octave, including the fifth. So that's pretty much it. Now, you may be wondering why there's no sound. That's because I may. Uh, uh, in order to export it, you need to go to Tools macros and prepare MIDI to export. What it does is convert uh, the track, the piano roll, the uh, whatever, whatever this is called, into a MIDI type file or something. I don't know, but it basically makes it possible to export these notes into a MIDI file. So you go to File, Export, MIDI file, and you save it. You have your MIDI file now. But what? I want to be able to hear these notes. And to that I say, uh, you go to this guy, replace it with a sampler. You take your sample of uh, the pickup penny sound. You drag it into the FL Studio. And you change the central note into G, because this is not G. This is G. This is Do. I mean C, whatever the fuck you call it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, now you have sound. Uh, but uh, wait, 
I want to export it again. I've made changes and I want to export it. Why does this appear? Well, as I said earlier, this is going to be em an empty MIT file. You need to go to Tools, Macros, Prepare for MIDI Export. And now it's going to be silent again, but now you'll be able to export it. I know it's dumb, but whatever. You just export it. There we go, you have your MIT file, but now you cannot work on this. You need to go to Sampler again. Uh, where, where is it? There we go. Sampler. Just drag it in here. Convert it into G. And you have it again, but you won't be able to export it until you do that again. Right? So just keep that in mind. It's very important. So you have your MIT file. Just copy it and you go to your program. I'm sorry, I already had this here. Just pretend I just uh, pasted it here uh, this for the first time. So you just drag it into the program and it's gonna generate a Lua file that contains all the info. The BPM is, you can change it, but it won't change anything. It just, uh, it just for information, just in case I need it. This is the signature. Uh, this is as well just information. You don't need it because you already have uh, the fixed baked uh, milliseconds in which these notes appear, which are called events, by the way. The events are the uh, the events of the 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 mid file. For example, this is an event because it plays a note here. This is an event because it plays like five notes here. This is an event. This is an event. This is an event. This is an event. So these are events essentially, okay? And each event includes their notes. Uh, I made this so that I can iterate between these notes and loop them around. So, as I said before, it's gonna loop around depending on the length of the note, okay? So for example, this is D sharp. So this is D sharp. This is A sharp. This is the longest next to it. I'm sorry, the shortest next to it. So this is A sharp. This is F. F. Then next is G sharp. We can see that it's G sharp and then F sharp. We got F sharp, the longest one. So it matches. I'm happy that this works. This works. And I didn't break anything. So. Uh, yeah, it's gonna just iterate between these and that's pretty much it. Of course, it won't e iterate between these. Uh, these are gonna just stay the same note regardless of where it is. Like here, it's just gonna start playing the same note. Here, it's just gonna, uh, hold on. Here, it's gonna start making an arpeggio just as I showed you before. Okay, but once it, uh, it reaches this point, it's just gonna start playing this same note. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you.